Yeah, good day again. It's uh, Charlie ZL2, Charlie Tango Mike. Um, just thought I'd uh, make a quick video on um, the next project, which again will be a series of videos. Sort of, uh, I, I guess, is a bit of a build log and a bit of an insight into um, sort of some of the thoughts and and ideas of of making this up. It's it's going to be another tramping radio. Um, it's specifically going to be for 20 meters, and uh, similar to what I've done in the past, I'll use one of these. You sort of see the size there, um, what we call sort of a plastic Tupperware container. Um, so very much what I've used in the past, and I'll reuse this board here. So the receiver itself will be mounted on this side, and then at this stage I'll probably stick with this JBOT style amplifier for the power amp, so it should give uh, about 5 watts out. Um, and we've had that one before, so that's the, uh, the, two, the two N3053s and uh, four BD139s uh, in a push-pull configuration to in parallel each side. Um, and that certainly worked well in the past. So anyway, so this 20 meter receiver, um, I'm going to use this time, again, I'm, I'm keen to use the SI5351 as the, um, as the VFO and the BFO generator on the receive side of the house. Uh, and once again, we'll use uh, clock zero and clock two. And this time I'm going to be a little bit different. I'm not going to use an Arduino um, Mini. I'm going to use this thing. So this is an, an ESP32 development board which I got in from China. It was a whole $9 US. So last night um, I... Uh, uh, so the refresh rate's not quite right on the old camera here, but... Um, you can program this ESP32 using the Arduino integrated development environment but before you can do so you need to basically well not, not basically you need to load into the Arduino IDE software support for the ESP32 um, and in this particular case I just followed a, a guide on YouTube uh, which took through or ran through uh, his process which seems to be very similar to the one on SparkFun and a couple of others where you download Git for a start, and Python, and then through Git you clone um, uh, a development environment and insert that into the, the Arduino environment. It, it wasn't overly difficult, um, there was a few steps there, and uh, in the end I found that the, the first one, the ESP32 development board, worked quite happily with, with this particular board here. If somebody else does that, just point of note, um, it took me quite a while to work out why I couldn't get the screen to work. Uh, and in the end, um, it's using the, the pinouts that it's using for this board for the reset, the SDA and the SCL for the I2C comms was different from what the board was expecting. So I had to go into the pinout file behind the scenes of the Arduino IDE and and, uh, and update one of the um, the files there to make it compatible with this particular one. As soon as I changed those pinouts and reloaded it, bang, it, it came up. So anyway, I'm going to use this as the um, as the brains, so hanging off that will be um, a rotary encoder um, like I, uh, I normally do, and then that'll drive uh, the SI5351. So that's a little bit different from what I've done in the past. In the past I've used the, uh, the Arduino nano in the micro and then sitting on the side here would have been a, um, a little 0 0.96 um, inch OLED but this one here is built in so uh, I reckon that's quite quite a nice way of doing it so uh, I'll continue developing that one and quite a nice thing too that switch there on the corner is actually um, free to use so that comes in on what they call pin 0 so I can use that um, to be, for example, a mode switch or something else, um, depending on how we develop the software in the end. So that's quite nice. I don't have to have a separate um, switch for that one, so it just saves a little bit more room. The radio itself is going to be um, a super hit, um, and will be a single conversion super hit. And I'm going to base it around this thing here, which is an ICOM Nikko Denshi uh, FL30 filter. Uh, came out of an old ICOM radio. Uh, this thing here has a, a center frequency of 9.0115, so basically 9 megahertz. Um, I cannot find the spec sheet for this online, so I'm going to have to guess what its um, expected input and output and pences are. So uh, for a start, I'll work on 
500 ohms and then I might look to also have a look at say 250 or say 200 ohms um, and what I'll probably do um, is I'll, I'll wire up the uh, the coils for both of those um, sweep it and then just um, and work out which is the best impedance for that but it's basically going to be based around that and um, a local ham here Chris ZL3CJH was very kind and gave me some NE612 uh, the old uh, Gilbert cell mixers um, I've never used these before so um, I wanted to use it in this particular radio to gain some experience on how to use those and he also gave me which was very nice um, some of these little small uh, tacky shimoa um, I'm probably pronouncing it incorrectly little latching relays so uh, the way these work is um, they latch in either direction so uh, a single pulse coming in on one of the pins latches it in one direction and then later on in time uh, a second um, small pulse on one of the other pins toggles it in the other direction so unlike a relay which is held on by magnetism this physically latches click clock click clock so um, that should be quite good so and what I'll do there is I'll have uh, those two relays sitting on either side of the filter uh, we'll have the two mixers with the SI5351 um, feeding those and uh, very similar to what um, Pete N6QW is doing with his simple receiver project and what I did over here on this radio about using one one relay is we will um, switch this, the, the direction of the, uh, the, uh, the signals going in so on receiver will go one way and then on transmit we'll feed it around and go back through the same way um, just to, uh, to reduce the numbers of uh, IF amps and the like <clears throat> so that should be interesting the other thing too, according to the spec sheets, these are 13 dB gain, so uh, again, so trying to learn experience on, on how to use these, it'll be interesting to see what additional IEF amplification I'll need um, in addition to these. So that's all part of the game, and that's um, why I'm making this sort of video series, is to document what I've found out and that may be of use to others. Um, the microphone will be what I've used in the past. Um, this incidentally in New Zealand and Australia, this little uh, earpiece here is what used to be in our telephones. Um, and Kodan, which is an Australian firm that makes HF radios, started to use these back in the 70s um, as a, uh, a microphone piece. So if you open up one of their, their microphones, you'll find this actually inside it. So it's quite interesting. Um, I've used these before and I've had them in the, in the house really for years and years and years. And uh, they're a nice little... Um, a nice little microphone and I was half tempted to also turn into an earpiece but at this stage of the game um, I'll stick with what I've normally been doing for a tramping radio um, which will be no speaker it'll be headphones um, which is what I quite like uh, for that uh, we'll, we'll do it properly we'll have um, a bandpass filter um, on the input um, as well as the the transmit audio we'll go through that before it goes off to um, uh, through to the final modulator and out to the transmitter so that's that's the ideas for this for this next radio and I'm pretty sure I should be able to get that to, uh, to all fit in there one way or another so I'm quite I should be able to make that work um, and uh, probably what I've done in the past I'll, I'll mount up here a microphone amplifier which will work quite well so the microphone will come in through the amplifier and then into the the main circuitry um, receive this will be the TR switch which we've done in the past that is a um, that is a double pole double throw switch so the uh, the back set of poles will be the antenna and the front set of poles or the front pole I should say will be um, the uh, transmit and receive switch for the uh, the 12 volts um, and on the back here we'll have a uh, um, I'll go with the Casco J310 uh, preamplifier and then we'll see what we can work out in terms of a low pass filter squeezing that in there as well so anyway that's the uh, that's the next project another tramping radio um, it's coming on summer here in New Zealand so it'd be good to have uh, a radio to to, uh, to work with that and 14 megahertz or that 20 meter band is a new band for me I haven't actually used that one and I must admit from a half wave dipole point of view um, having 5 meters each way uh, makes for what um, quite a nice small compact antenna for some of the huts that we have here in New Zealand So anyway, I'll uh, keep you posted. This will be this will be a build log um, Keep the questions coming 
and um, we will learn how to use these little things. Um, like I say, I haven't used these before, so uh, we'll work out how to make those work, and we'll go from there. Anyway, I think that pretty well covers it all. Um, we'll say 73s, and uh, we will see you for the next part of this exciting venture. Cheerio, thanks.